Hello, I'm John Bachman. The White House says today it will continue to sharpen its, sharpen its focus on the threat of homegrown terrorists after yesterday's attack in Canada's capital. Uh, the president himself has identified the risk uh, of a lone wolf terrorist uh, as something that uh, is significant. The U.S. Embassy, of course, was put on lockdown in Ottawa yesterday, and additional guards were sent to the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. National security agencies have also already stepped up surveillance uh, at, after militants claim they would target tourist attractions in cities like New York and Las Vegas. Also today, investigators in Canada are still working to determine whether the shooter in yesterday's fatal attack had any direct ties to Islamic militants. Today, Michael Zahaf Babu's mother uh, says that she's mourning for the victims, not her son. Susan Babu described her son as a misfit. And earlier today, Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper spoke about the need to strengthen his nation's terror laws. Our laws and police powers need to be strengthened in the area of surveillance, detention and arrest. They need to be much strengthened. And I assure you, Mr. Speaker, that work, which is already underway, will be expedited. 24-year-old Corporal Nathan Cirillo, a father, was a soldier who was killed at the National War Memorial in Ottawa yesterday. The Prime Minister and his wife laid a wreath there earlier this morning in his honor. And before returning to session, members of Parliament gave a standing ovation to the sergeant at arms who shot and killed the gunman inside the Parliament building. You can see lawmakers there rising to honor sergeant at arms Kevin Vickers. He stopped the attacker with his handgun in the halls of Parliament yesterday. And U.S led coalition forces unleash more than a dozen new airstrikes on ISIS fighters along the border town of Kobani. And now Kurdish reinforcements are expected to help fight against Islamic State militants trying to take that Syrian town right on the border with Turkey. But that's actually making Turkey nervous. They see the Kurdish forces in Kobani as an enemy because of a tie to a suspected terror group. The unrest in Ferguson continues as new details about the autopsy of Michael Brown leak out. Demonstrators once again facing off with police last night after a St. Louis Post-Dispatch report says that Michael Brown was shot at close range and had gunpowder residue on his hand. That info comes from the official autopsy. It also contradicts witnesses who say the fatal shot was fired by Officer Darren Wilson while Brown was running away with his hands up. And the CDC is prepping new rapid response squads able to rush to any city where a new Ebola case occurs. The agency says these specialists are kind of like a public health SWAT team. The squads will be made of about 20 experts in communications, Ebola outbreak, investigations, infection control, and clinical medicine. Three of these teams have already been dispatched to New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. The goal now is to have the ability to put one of these teams in any city within hours of a confirmed case. Another Newsmax Now update for you in 30 minutes. Now back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Thank you.